I think it's not um, possible today to think of conservation and of art history without uh, scientific and technical support. These are all activities that take part behind the scenes. They, they're not immediately visible, but they are uh, part of the object as you see it in the display. The way cases are designed, the way objects are installed, it's strictly informed by uh, preservation concerns. We use every technique imaginable, from x-rays, from infrared reflectographies, from close-up uh, investigations with a microscope. We have probes that allow us to take the instrument to the object, not a part of the object into the instrument. The Department of Scientific Research fits squarely in the mission of the museum to study and preserve uh, these works of art. This is an Hellenistic um, stela. It's a tomb uh, decoration. It was found in Alexandria in 1884, and it's been at the museum uh, for over a century. It depicts a scene where the departed uh, bids farewell to probably his spouse. This is remarkable because of the amount of paint preserved. At first glance, uh, you would look at it and say that not much is left, uh, that the paint is badly damaged, but this is indeed a lot of paint for something that's more than 2,000 years old. What we're going to do with scientific analysis is to try to find more what the Greek painters were using, uh, what were their practices, what range of pigments they were using, how they were applying them to the the surface and what kind of optical effects they were trying to achieve. This is a portable x-ray fluorescence analyzer. This kind of analyzer could actually be um, carried around through the galleries. It can work with a battery and it's handheld. For this kind of work we want it to be in position for a longer time to get um, a more sensitive um, analysis. The object was probably completely decorated. This architectural setting preserved preserves traces of color. You see some red, yellow, blue, and a dark band here plus an inscription. So it would have been brightly colored. Now with this instrument we're going to um, analyze the painted surface in a completely non-destructive way. So the, the instrument doesn't actually touch the surface. It makes a very weak beam of x-ray so it's completely safe. Um, and it has a solid state detector that captures x-rays that are bounced off the surface. And these x-rays carry a signature which is typical of the elements present. Most pigments up until the uh, 1860s when the synthetic material became available um, have always been obtained from minerals or um, some inorganic compounds. Um, materials containing copper, iron, mercury, arsenic. They give uh, bright colors and they're very convenient to use uh, as paints. A certain number of um, colors were also available in antiquity, um, came from uh, plants or insects. They were um, organic colors, uh, so if you imagine the range of color you find in, in, in plants and flowers. So when we looked at this purple pigment, we, we immediately asked ourselves whether it would be a mineral pigment or plant-based pigment. And now the x-ray analyzer will tell us whether uh, this is uh, the case. We started and we obtained a readout on the uh, screen of the computer immediately. What are we seeing uh, here in the analysis? We're getting lots of calcium and strontium from the stone. Um, a lot of lead, presumably the lead white ground, and then a distinct peak for iron. So what we're seeing um, here is that the, um, the presence of iron makes me suspect that it's uh, indeed a, uh, a mineral paint. It's probably hematite or some kind of dark ochre. Um, that's a very significant uh, contribution we get from the iron. We, we measured uh, other areas and we don't see such a big iron signal. Also the aspect that um, 
as we detected from microscopic examination, is consistent with the with an iron-based pigment. So it's ruling out the presence of organic materials. It's a restricted palette. It's sort of like uh, resources used wisely. We have yellows and that are based on ore pigment, which is an arsenic compound known since antiquity. These browns are um, ochres, so earth colors. And, um, and the use of blue, probably Egyptian blue, which was um, um, a synthetic pigment uh, created by the, discovered by the Egyptians. We see it probably here as an underpaint on the hair of the man. The actual paint layer representing the hair is lost, but we see this underpaint, which probably had the uh, purpose of brightening the, the color. Well, I think these sorts of studies are really letting us put the color back into antiquity. Um, we've inherited a lot of aesthetics since the Renaissance about how antiquity monochromatic, essentially about the marble substrate. And as these sorts of studies are made that are really sort of detailed technical studies, we can accurately reconstruct what the visual aesthetics and visual culture was of antiquity. Scientific analysis of these objects is one of the most challenging tasks. We're working with samples that are, when we can take them, much smaller than any sample that uh, a forensic scientist or a biochemist uh, works with. We have the responsibility of preserving these objects.